Hey everybody and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm your host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting September 24th, 2012. Let's jump right into this week's security news, starting with two boring yet crucial software updates. Uh, two different vendors released software updates this week that you probably should know about. The first was Cisco's biannual security patch day, where they released eight security bulletins, which fixed a bunch of security vulnerabilities in many iOS systems, some catalyst switches, and their unified communication systems. Uh, the biggest vulnerabilities you should probably know about were some iOS denial of service vulnerabilities. There's a bunch of different ones. Uh, some had to do with how they handle DHCP v6 traffic and some others. But long story short, attackers could leverage these vulnerabilities against your iOS routers to cause them to stop responding or reboot. While uh, denial of service vulnerabilities typically aren't too severe or too risky, when they actually are in your router, sometimes, or more specifically, your internet gateway router, they can be kind of risky because attackers can use them to knock you off the internet. So if you have any Cisco iOS devices, go patch for sure. Uh, the other update I want to let you know about is one that comes from Google for their Chrome browser. If you're a Chrome browser user like I am, you definitely want to go get the latest version of Chrome as it fixes 24 different vulnerabilities in the very popular browser. The next story is news of yet another Java Zero Day vulnerability. A popular Polish security researcher named Adam Gaudiak reported on the full disclosure mailing list information about a new Java vulnerability. Uh, this vulnerability actually affects all versions of Java, from Java 6 all the way up to 7 and some older ones as well. This is different than the last flaw we talked about since that one only affected the latest versions of Java. Anyways, uh, Adam doesn't give a lot of detail about this uh, particular vulnerability other than he's reported it to Oracle and it is a very serious flaw. So the good news is bad guys are not exploiting this flaw in the wild like they were the one we reported a few weeks ago. So just know there's yet another Java vulnerability out there. The bad guys don't know about it and aren't exploiting it yet, but now that they've seen evidence of it, they'll probably start looking for it. So this is another sign that you should at the very least always keep Java up to date. And frankly, if you can get away with not using Java on your computer, you should probably try to. Granted, many websites do leverage Java just for legitimate purposes. At the Eco Party Security Conference in Argentina, a security researcher disclosed a new vulnerability that can wipe certain models of Samsung Android phones. Essentially, he found a flaw in how these Samsung phones handle a URI or a special link. Uh, and basically, if he can get a victim to click on or, or uh, visit a web browser that points to one of these specially crafted links in the iframe, it would actually wipe all the data on that phone and or factory reset the SIM card and the phone. Apparently, the vulnerability affects Samsung Galaxy 2 and Galaxy 3 phones and a few other models as well. On top of that, the researcher also showed an NFC trick or near field communication trick where if he could get you to use the near field communication of the phone to maybe swipe it against a NFC sticker, the sticker could actually point to the specially crafted uh, iframe that would wipe your phone. Now I don't think there's a patch for this yet, but if you're a Samsung user, you probably want to keep a track of Samsung's firmware updates and keep your phone up to date. Next up is a story about a big smart grid or SCADA related software vendor breach. This week, a company called Telvent reported that their network had been breached by attackers and the attackers were able to steal the project files associated with something they call their OASIS system. Uh, this is a software or SCADA system used to control smart grid stuff or to monitor smart grids. Now, they haven't released all the details on how they think this breach happened. Uh, often, there's default passwords in some of these systems, so some suspect it might be that. Uh, they do think the attackers can actually 
access to their project files, but they don't think that they had any sort of control or access to the SCADA system itself. And by the way, OASIS is used to control oil and gas uh, facilities or, or infrastructure. So it controls some pretty critical infrastructure. In any case, we'll keep track of this particular hack, and it's more uh, proof that one of my predictions about digital attacks affecting physical infrastructure is coming true. Both researchers and attackers are increasingly targeting SCADA and ICS systems. So if you manage any of these systems or you're a vendor that creates software for these systems, you need to pay pr particular attention to security, making sure your, your code is created securely and the networks that are running this type of software are very well protected. As an aside, I'm going to be releasing this month's September's Radio Free Security Podcast on iTunes in the next couple couple days. And in that particular podcast, I actually uh, interview a industry expert uh, that works at Alstom Grid, one of the other uh, smart grid type vendors out there. So if you're interested in SCADA and ICS attacks, I highly encourage you to check out this month's Radio Free Security. So I'll finish up this episode with some late breaking news that just came out Thursday night. In both a tweet and a blog post, Adobe warned that they had just learned their network had been breached and attackers had stolen one of their code signing certificates. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, Windows, you probably know that third party code, whether it's drivers or software, often get signed by a certificate so that your operating system can know that the software really comes from uh, the particular vendor it says it comes from. Well, in their blog post, Adobe warned that one of their code signing certificates was stolen and was discovered being used in some malicious uh, programs that were out in the wild. Now, Adobe said they only found a few malicious utilities that were using these stolen Adobe certs. However, later in the afternoon, Chief Research Officer from F-Secure, whose name is Miko Hipponen, tweeted that their AV database actually contained many, many different malware sample variants that contained this particular Adobe certificate, code signing certificate. So it seems that a lot of malware out there is trying to make itself look more legitimate by using Adobe's legitimate code signing certificate. By the way, this is one of the very advanced techniques that a lot of APTs like Stuxnet used to help them uh, get run on a system without kind of uh, letting the administrator know that something's wrong. So it is a rather advanced technique that we usually only see in very advanced targeted attacks. Anyways, Adobe promises that they're going to revoke this certificate. They plan on doing it early October, as they say in their blog post. So if you're an Adobe user, you definitely want to check this out. There are some Adobe Air products. Uh, they listed in their blog post uh, which software uses this particular uh, now stolen certificate. So if you use any of those products, you may have to do something in the future. In any case, stay tuned. We'll be sure to post new information about this on the WatchGuard Security Center blog. And that's yet another exciting week in network security. I hope you found something in this episode interesting or educational. If you'd like more regular uh, security news, be sure to check out my blog, WatchGuardSecurityCenter.com. I'll actually post a couple extra stories which I didn't cover this week in the blog post associated with this video. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. I hope you join us next time on the same bat channel at the same bat time. But until then, thank you for watching. Watching. And here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.